billion naira in a single day on FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange. That's quite massive. To the north. That's it, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, uh, get uh, Kristen uh, Orejakwe, who is the head of research at Codros Capital, to join this conversation here in the studios this morning and talking to the state of the economy and the consumer goods companies listed in our markets, what they call disposable income for consumers. And uh, if you should invest in consumer goods, put your money in what you eat, drink, and use. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Wilson. It's good to have you here. Thanks, pleasure. Um, the economy is said to be recovering, and that's what your analysts, macroeconomic analysts, are saying. So, if the economy is recovering, how do you, how is it, this uh, likely to impact on consumer goods? Okay, uh, the companies. Okay, specifically, uh, so I, I just like to take you back to the experience we had in 2016, and then how we expect um, the recovery in the, in the macro environment to sort of you know impact the operating performance of the consumer goods companies on the NSC. So last year was a very challenging year in Nigeria. So we know the you know, growth story for the economy. Um, so the significant depression that um, the average, uh, significant depression in the purchasing power of the average Nigerian. And uh, most consumer goods companies were significantly hit because uh, a lot of them suffered um, volume contraction. And besides that, um, a lot of them were also exposed to had most of their costs that are significantly linked to, to FX as well. Uh, we saw significant increase in production costs and massive construction in, in, the, in, the, in the margins anyways. Um, so most companies have had significant uh, dep uh, depletion in their earnings anyways. So, but what we've seen so far this year is some sort of improvement. Uh, we're beginning to see more dollar availability relative to last year. And um, so more companies are able to access FX and you know, from the very high level, we saw FX trading towards the end of 2016. We've seen a massive reduction in terms of um, Naira exchange rate to the dollar. So more companies have more FX, you know, more business predictability. And as, so, that's, so that's on the cost side anyway. So that's helping to improve the margins. And then we've also seen a lot of companies take very proactive measures um, from the later part of last year, they took their prices up. Initially, companies were very skeptical. They didn't want to take prices up because you don't want to raise prices in an environment when consumer purchasing power is under pressure. So a lot of companies are taking that boat today because your margins, you have to protect your margin at some point. So most companies are taking price increases. And then looking at the environment itself, it looks like Nigerians are beginning to adjust to the hardship we saw last year. Um, job losses are sort of tapered. Um, we're beginning to see some sort of recovery in terms of income, you know, because of the FX issues. Um, like I said, for most of last year, because of the significant, you know, depreciation in, in, in terms of the value of the Naira, most commodity prices were affected. But now that we've seen some sort of adjustments, people are able to consume more than last year. So, you know, it all adds together to brighten the outlook for most consumer companies. That's what my question really is. If the economy is recovering and Nigeria says, well, I haven't seen it because the price of toothpaste and toothbrushes, bread and butter, hasn't really tapered down. So how would I agree with you as an analyst, as a research person, that the economy is recovering? And folks want to see a recovery in the economy on their breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. Is that how you see it? That's not the way I see it. Okay, so pretty much, um, like I said, last year, one of the major challenges we faced was significant job losses. Um, we had many, many companies asking people to go, you know, because costs were going high and companies had to rationalize at some point. We've seen that sort of taper. And then also there's been some sort of transfer pricing. So the, the, the idea is you raise your price, I raise my price, the next guy raises his price. So, you know, there has been some, some very, you know, macro-wide adjustments to the to this scenario. Everybody have adjusted to prices. And then, you know, the pricing environment is a lot more predictable right now. Because if you look from the third quarter of last year, if you buy an item at this price, you can be sure that when you go to the market the next time, the price is moving up. So, but from this year, we've seen some sort of stability. So from the increases, from the very sharp increases you saw as of December, not too many companies have announced price increment now because the dollar is pretty much available. And with the significant intervention and, you know, the, I mean, the actions of Central Bank, you know, it's very clear that Central Bank is out there and have the buffer anyway. You see what's happening in terms of oil production. So, there is, you know, companies have this understanding, this comfort that Central Bank has the buffer to protect the FX. So, FX is pretty much going to be available at least within the short time. You know, so there's no really reasons for people, for companies to raise prices. So, you know, I mean, when there's some sort of certainty, some predictability, it helps 
in, in people's consumption decision. Actually. So that takes me to the next one about putting my money in stocks of consumer goods. What's the outlook uh, for the earnings season that is going to so start in the next one week or two as far as the consumer goods side of the discussion is? I expect consumer goods companies to do well. We've seen some very amazing numbers from the fourth quarter of last year. Um, so significant year on year growth. You know, revenue and even earnings as well. You know, and that also happened in the, in the second quarter as well. And as you keep seeing, the, the Nigerian consumer and the I mean, consumer goods companies performances has a very strong linkage to the economy. And reality of the matter is, when you see leading indicators that are very good there, they all tell the story that there seems to be there seems to be some sort of improvement in the macro. You see the PMI numbers, you see the business expectation in the uh, survey data, we see the consumer confidence data. They all suggest the fact that. You know, people are a bit more optimistic right now than we are, than we are you know, uh, um, I mean, this time last year. You know, so I expect a lot of them to do well. Um, some have suffered some um, volume contraction as, as a result of price increases. But when you relate to the amount at which volume have, 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 have dropped relative to the amount at which they raised prices, you know, there is a very positive adjustment. And so and margins have pretty much, you know, been adjusted after the price increase. So I expect most consumer companies to continue the trend, you know, that we've seen from the first quarter of this year. Okay. In terms of where the, the, the share prices will be, do you think this will have a knock-on effect, positive benefits on, on, on that? The reality of the matter is in the last two months, we've seen very significant movement in the, in the price of stocks in the market. Um, yet today, the index is 21%. Uh, most consumer companies, the, the blue chip ones, and those of them that, have, that had very fantastic first quarter numbers have benefited from this rally. Uh, so the, my worry is that, that I mean, in as much as I expect the numbers to be good, it is very, it is very unlikely that, number, that, cons, that investors are going to react very aggressively to those numbers when they come out because prices have moved up already. Um, Nestle is already trading uh, well, slightly above its fair value. Same thing for Unilever. Same thing for PZ. You know, so with the general buzz in the market, there seems to be some, some sort of over overpricing. So you hardly would you find any major and significant opportunity within the consumer environment in terms of capital gain opportunities, except okay. for a few names, really. Okay. Uh, Christian, thanks for coming. We appreciate that. Christian, or or uh, uh talking to the side of consumer goods and the market here, of course, at the state of the economy. We'll come back to you after the break. Uh, then we'll have the conversation about oil. Then later, something about family planning and how that could reduce Nigeria's rice imports if we do this right.